Major support has been provided by Chevron, the Kern County Superintendent of Schools, Edison International, Valley Strong Credit Union, California Resources Corporation, Panama Buena Vista Union School District, and the Kern High School District. With additional production assistance provided by these supporters of education in Kern County and throughout the state of California. Welcome everybody, we're out here at RLH with Jim Shepard. Jim, how are you doing today? I'm doing excellent, thank you. Well, I mean, I see fire protection, what, what is RLH? You know, what, what are we doing here? Our, RLH, we, um, we are primarily a sprinkler contractor where we put in fire sprinklers for residential, commercial, and big warehouses, aircraft hangars, all kinds of different things. So anything that might catch on fire that needs to be suppressed, you guys can service? Yes. Okay. Yes. We, uh, we also uh, do fire alarm systems um, that detect the fire. Also, they can also activate the sprinkler systems. Okay. Um, we also have um, security systems, surveillance, uh, things like that. Okay. Because I see here, I see the you know 24 hour video surveillance, security, and then, so I'm looking at these batteries and what most people might recognize in different businesses, fire alarms, you know, you have the pull, um, the, the strobe light, you know, so do you guys also install those components also? Yes, we do. Okay. What goes into designing a system, um, like for a school or a brand new business building? There, well, there's a, a lot of different things that, that go into it. Um, all of these different devices that you see here, you have a fire alarm panel, pole station, you have some modules, smoke detectors, the horns and strobes and the batteries. Okay. Those are typical components of a fire alarm system. NFPA uh, 72 is the guidelines that we have to follow. So one of the things that we were going to talk about today where we use mass uh, on a fire alarm system is where the batteries apply. The batteries are there so that if power goes out, you know, we all know about the rolling blackouts and right. stuff Right, especially like that. here in California it's, going in, it's in the summertime. Here, yeah. Yes. The, Code says that a fire alarm system has to be able to stay alive and functional for, for 24 hours and 15 minutes of alarm. Okay. Okay, so 24 hours in standby, 15 minutes in, in alarm. Okay, so I mean, different size batteries, different size systems. How do you guys calculate how many batteries, how big of a battery? What do you guys do? I'm sure that's where the math is at this here. Is, so, this, yeah, this so where, is where do you come up lab. with those numbers? What we've come up with, we've come up with a spreadsheet. Basically, we fill in the blanks and it does the math for us. So I've got our typical components uh, where it says the device and model uh, number. Uh, those are all our typical devices. Um, over a little more to the left there, it talks about what kind of devices those are, pole station photoelectric smoke detectors. Okay, so depending on how many of each you need for a building, mm -hmm. you'll, you'll plug it in, it'll tell you how many, you know, it looks like current amps, meaning how many are constantly running through it while like it's it's live, like on yeah, the grid? Well, if it's just sitting there. Okay, okay, so once it's installed and it's sitting there constantly monitoring. Right. Okay. It, it draws a certain amount of current, and then when it goes into alarm, then it draws more current. And so we need to know what all of those values are. And code says that we have to stay afloat for, tw for 24 hours. Right, and then 15 minutes of alarm. Time. And then 15 minutes of alarm. So those are both numbers that we have to calculate. And so down here at the bottom, we show that, you know, 24 hours. And so I'll plug that value in. And then for 15 minutes, uh, the decimal value of one hour is going to be, you know, uh, 0 0.25 hours or 15 minutes. Gotcha. Some military projects, we have to go 48 hours. So it just and, depends on whatever that regulation is. Yeah, 48 hours, 72 hours, um, 15 minutes, 30 minutes, one hour. Depends on what they want. Right. Well, perfect. We come back. We'll explore more here at RLH and figure out how do they keep the world safe.
And welcome back out here to RLH. We're with Alan. Alan, how are you doing today? Great. How are you? Oh, uh, you know, I've uh, learned that you guys not only detect fires, but it looks like you guys also suppress the fires yes, with we your do. system. So, um, 100%. What, are, what, what, are, what do we have going on here? I know I constantly ask that question in these segments because really, I have no idea what I'm looking at here. So this, <laughs> is a, this is a project we did at Travis Air Force Base okay. uh, up north of San Francisco uh, a couple of years ago. Okay. And it was a good example of a foam, high-X foam system okay. that we did for the Navy, NAVFAC. Uh, this is the city that the hangar's located in. This is getting a little closer. It shows some of the structures around it. This is our actual hangar. Okay. And this is a blow up of the hangar. Gotcha. So basically when you have to put out a fire in a high hazard aircraft hangar, you need two suppression systems. One is a sprinkler system. This is a depiction of the sprinkler system, the actual drawing we submitted to the Navy. Okay. You can see the silhouette of the aircraft here. Uh, this is a C-5A Galaxy aircraft. It's the largest aircraft the military has. It's a cargo plane. It looks like it takes up 70,000 square feet yeah, to, this, to this house hangar, this. 70,000 square feet, 104 feet tall. A very large aircraft in a very big hangar. Okay. Fuel is very light. And if you hit it with sprinklers only, like a traditional building, the fuel is lighter than water. It floats to the top, continues to burn, and then it can spread because on now the you're surface. now you're giving it a surface to you're okay. giving it a surface to travel on with the water. It's a part of our system. So what the wet system does is it cools the fire down to give time for the foam, the high expansion foam that we're going to look at. It gives it time to suppress the fire, to suffocate it. Okay, so that's what we have here: the different locations yes. of the foam generators, now and these, these are, are up the, in the ceiling. They're up in the ceiling okay. uh, at various elevations. Now these radiuses around these foam generators show how fast the foam can spread in 35 seconds okay. from the center of the generator out. Uh, the operating GPM is 181 GPM at 40 PSI on each of these generators. So 181 gallons a minute foam coming out. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of foam. Well, that's that's water. That's, oh, that's the, just the that's water. the solution. Okay. The CFM is twenty two thousand CFM coming out of each generator. So the solution thousand cubic feet of foam per minute. <laughs> yeah, it's a little bit of foam. It's a lot of foam. <laughs> oh my goodness! This is the actual generator we used. It's seven foot nine inches tall. Okay. It weighs seven hundred and fifty pounds, and it's six feet square. So they're very, very, God. very large. <laughs> I mean, I know we can't go out to something this large and see right. the foam in action, but um, it sounds like you have an opportunity for us to go out and see the foam in action and see yes, we do. how quickly it expands. Yes, we do. We will We will demonstrate that later. Awesome. Well, let's get on out to the yard. Let's see this stuff in action. Okay. Thanks so much for everything. We appreciate You're welcome. it. All right, welcome back here to RLH. We just finished up working with Alan, looking at what the numbers look like when you're dealing with high expansion foam used for fire suppression. And we're out here in the yard with Marty. Marty, how you doing? Really good, how are you? Good, so uh, we have a bucket of water. We have some, looks like something concentrated. Uh, what are we doing here? What do we got? Uh, so in a high expansion foam, they come in different percentages. This is a 2% concentration of high expansion foam okay. that we get from our supplier. Today we're using only five gallons, which is 640 ounces, and 2% of that is 12.8 ounces. So what we're gonna do is take out 12.8 ounces. Okay. Approximately. As close as we can get. Yeah. Close, close enough for? Yeah. So that's about right. All right. So I haven't taken the water out. Okay. We don't need that anymore. Got it. And I already pre-mixed my foam okay. concentrate, okay. which we're going to insert. And now we have went from concentrate to solution. And just like that, this is ready to be Th used? This is ready. What happens in a system when it starts going, you have what you call a proportioner. And the system, as the water's going through, it's pushing this foam concentrate in at 2% into the proportion. Okay, so it's not necessarily mixed in the system, no. but the system mixes it as it's being dispersed. Correct. It does. It's not foam until it hits the end and generates into a foam. Well, sweet. So it sounds like we have it ready to go. It's been pre-mixed. Um, let's go see what yeah. it looks like and how it gets dispersed. All right. 
So it's already pre-mixed. We're over here. Um, what do we have here, Marty? What, what are we looking at here? So, so what we have here is basically a miniature fire system. Okay. So I have a little submersible pump. It's acting like a fire pump, which our fire pumps are putting out 2,000 gallons a minute at 175 psi. <laughs> Right, and so it's a, it's so, a good so, amount of pressure coming. So out it was of really system, fun to okay. miniaturize this down, so it kind of represents what it really does. Okay, you know, in a miniature system, when the fire starts in an airplane hangar, these fire eyes see it. Okay, and within one second, that fire pump starts. It releases the water, starts the fire pump, and it's moving. So it has to move from the source, right? And you have to get this solution in there and get it dumped to make foam get it on the ground and spread within 60 seconds to cover underneath the airplanes right. is that 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 regulation you got to make sure you are that, in there that, on that that's that a line. military regulation the other test we have to do is get one meter of the entire hangar full of foam within four minutes okay so is that the other reason behind the high pressure is to quickly move that that yes that, that uh, solution through the line yes okay well awesome so it looks like once we turn this pump on we're immediately going to start pumping out and right well sweet let's go take a look all right all right marty looks like we have a little sort of simulation sample here i'm i'm, I'm sure no one was wanting to donate a learjet or something for us no. to demonstrate this in a hangar so no and i probably have, have to pull a permit just to do right. it <laughs> what, what are we looking at here what, what are we so, doing so basically i tried to represent an airplane hangar my plastic bucket there is representing a hangar that is like 100 or 200 feet wide and 300 feet long. Okay. So that plane is representing 737. Right. You know, massive. They're, they're, they're massive. Some of these hangars, they put one plane in, you know, a B-52 or might have 20 F-16s. Right. Right. So you're trying to protect this entire building all at the same time. Up here, I have what we represent as a foam generator. Okay. And it, it kind of looks like one. They actually have fans inside of them that are hydraulically rotated. Once the water hits there, it starts turning the fan. Okay. All by itself. There's no electronics needed. Right. That, that, that pressure we talked about right. earlier, that's what's spinning it, that blade. It's spinning that blade and the solution's coming out and, and it has a screen on it. A fire inside that might be only the size of this whole pan. Right. A real fire. All right, so down there, I have a little metal thing with some diesel fuel in it. That'll represent our fire. Well, let's, uh, let's see what happens when we uh, light some fire and suppress All it. Right. All right, fire's going. Pumps are turned on, alarms are ringing. Just like wow. that. Wow. Boom. And foam's coming out to make a nice foam not over the fire yet. Now it's going over the fire, smothering all the oxygen in place. You wow. see how big the bubbles are. This gets really huge really fast. This is a small scale. This, this is a small scale. The size of the foam coming out. And when we do a test, it's it's a lot of prep. A lot of prep, getting ready to go, and then and, yep. and it's three minutes and you're done. That's how fast the test is. That's it. Man, and you can see how it's foaming really well, getting really high. This is only that 2% solution. Wow. If someone wanted to get into this career field, and they, you know, into the fire suppression field, into safety and risk management, what, what would they need to do? Come down and talk to you? Or? Come down and talk to me, talk to anybody in our company or any other company that does fire suppression. There, there's a lot of really good quality workers out there, and they love math. That's one best part about it. Right. Is everything about this stuff is math. How we get the foam there, how fast. Definitely math involved. On behalf of Do The Math, we want to say thank you for helping us All do right, the math. Thanks. We really appreciate it. Thanks for your time out here at RLH.